Okay, so uh, my name's uh, Ollie Bridle. I'm a subject librarian at the Radcliffe Science Library and have my colleague here. Um, I'm, I'm Helen Ward and I'm Deputy Head of Learning at the Ashmolean Museum. Yeah. And uh, together we've been working on our Glam Digital Makers um, project. So we thought we'd start by uh, defining what we mean uh, by digital making. Uh, so Nesta, who are an um, innovation foundation that work across the uh, arts, culture and sciences, they define digital making as learning about technology through making with it. So we live increasingly in a world that is uh, dominated by digital technology and our future economy is going to depend heavily um, on our, our digital technology. And it's important that people are not only able to passively consume that technology, but can also work with it, uh, manipulate it and be creative with it as well. And that's what digital making is all about. It's enabling uh, that creativity with technology. Digital making allows us to um, incorporate technology in creative ways in uh, a variety of our activities. So in the GLAM context, uh, this could be using technology um, to uh, be involved with crafting projects, which use our very rich collections in the museums and the libraries as their inspiration. Um, or it could be adding interactive uh, components to some of our teaching. And you'll see examples of both of those things as we go on. Okay, so our project um, actually merged two separate ideas that Ollie and I uh, submitted to Glam Labs last year. Um, and, and the benefit of that has been that it's really been able to build on the strengths of, of the both ideas. And um, what the project aimed to do was to explore the potential of digital making for both audiences, but also for staff development. Um, and partnerships were really key to this project. We had um, an early meeting um, with Mark at the um, Makerspace at um, Oxfordshire County Libraries, um, which set us off to a fantastic start with this project because Mark ran an intro session for staff. Um, he's been offering advice, letting us loan um, kit, um, and that's been really important. And he also pointed us in the direction of our sort of digital maker experts. So some of the funding went to um, paying for the time of Sarah Townsend, um, who also works at Science Oxford in this field, to kind of hold our hands as we went along. So that's been really important. Um, and what we did is we brought together a group of staff, so about 12 staff from um, the Ashmolean, but also across the libraries. And it was very much a focus about learning together and learning by doing. Um, so this kind of process that evolved was it sort of started off with staff workshops where we brought in speakers from other museums and libraries to inspire us, had lots of chance to play with kit. Um, and from that, we then moved into smaller groups where we began to develop activities and then finally on to testing them with audiences. Um, and what was interesting is, is this is a book that, I, um, that Mark recommended to me um, when we'd actually started um, but this, um, this sort of is uh, Mitch Resnick, who's at the, the MIT lab, and he talks about his four Ps for creative learning. And as, as I read it, I thought, that's sort of what we're doing here, because he talks about the importance of peers and peer learning. He talks about the importance of play as a way of learning. And he also talks about being a, people being able to be led by their own passion, their interest, and then finally as, uh, onto projects. And that's, very much what the, that's been very much the ethos of this, um, this project. Lots of different audiences, can't cover them all. Um, we've picked out a couple. So families. Um, at the Ashmolean, um, we have a really busy family programme. We, we have about 12,000 sort of children, parents, grandparents coming to us each year, taking part in a range of activities. Um, in our holidays, last week particularly was a you know, busy time, um, we have these drop-in events where we have craft on offer, object, make, uh, object handling, storytelling. But what we do observe is that particularly, I think, that sort of slightly older, sort of 10 to 13-year-old who's still coming with their family might not always be so engaged, and I think particularly um, with boys. So we were interested in what potential digital making could ha might have to really sort of tap into to that group. So the families group worked together to develop two activities. So this was tied into our October half-term programming, and that was all themed around the gunpowder plot. So the fact we have Guy Fawkes Lantern in our collection was the sort of basis, and that was the inspiration. And the two activities we developed 
Um, at the top, we use these little Ozobots that are sort of little mini coding robots that are a really accessible and quick way to, to get the hang of coding. And we created, or we invited children to have a go at creating their own game to see if they could actually um, stop Guy Fawkes blowing up the Houses of Parliament. The other activity you see down the bottom here um, was using something called Makey Makey, which is an electronic kind of kit um, that you can use, you can, that you, you can basically allow any kind of everyday object to hook up to a computer. So what was nice here is that children were able to craft fireworks in usual kind of craft materials, but then take it a step further by using Scratch to actually then animate them with sound effects. So it went down really well. Um, you can see here from the feedback that when we asked the question, would you be up for more of this, we got a really big response. 84% of the, the children and young people involved wanted more. And parents, too, were also really positive. Um, it was interesting, actually, um, that there were quite a few dads who got really stuck in. Um, so this, this dad here who tweeted about the experience, they took it another level, and they saw... This was the event we ran at the, um, the library, um, and he you know, they took it a step further and then started writing code to also create a visual animation of the firework going up along with the sound effects. So I think what this demonstrated is clear potential for this to be a way of developing audiences. But I think it also sits in a bigger national picture with a kind of increasing recognition of the role of creativity in education. So last year, the Durham Commission reported and made a number of recommendations. And one of the things they talked about was the importance of children and young people accessing digital creativity. But then coming back to our friends Nesta, there's also research out there that shows that actually not all children and young people get that chance and that there's a disparity and it's often disadvantaged children not getting that opportunity. And I think that that presents a question about what role GLAM might be able to play in actually widening access to digital creativity. And sort of uh, leading on from that, we thought we would look at um, how we might be able to work with some of our PGCE students here in Oxford's Department of Education to introduce them to uh, digital making ideas, to the equipment um, that we use in digital making, because we recognise that perhaps those teachers don't have the skills or the experience of using any of that technology that they can then um, take into the classroom. Um, so working with the Education Library and with the uh, Department of Education here in Oxford, we took uh, five groups of PGC students and we got them to come along to the makerspace at the Oxford Central Library and uh, they experimented with lots of different types of digital making kits. Some of the things that Helen's already mentioned, the Ozobots, uh, microbits, all sorts of different things. So they've got some practical experience of using um, this technology, uh, but we also encourage them to reflect on how they could actually use digital making as a tool in the classroom. And that led us to some really uh, interesting discussions and feedback on what the obstacles were to using it in the classroom, what some of the opportunities um, might be. Um, one of the outcomes of, of doing these sessions is that uh, one student in particular who came to our first PGCE session um, they were actually inspired to go out and to ask their own college in Oxford for a little bit more money um, so they could buy um, some of their own digital making kit that they could then use um, with students in uh, the uh, school placement that they're in at the moment. So people actually went and they ran with this idea and wanted to extend it further. I think this is also a really nice example of how we've been able to use the project to be able to offer uh, a new session and a new service to one of our academic departments. So it's showing what GLAM can do if we work together um, with some of our, our academic departments. It also, I think, um, illustrates uh, the uh, potential for other sort of research that needs to be undertaken, looking at sort of the access to this kind of equipment and this kind of kit within um, schools as well. We've also um, not forgotten about the theme of supporting um, staff development. So we've been looking at ways that we can make sure that uh, staff within GLAM have the kind of skills that they need uh, for the 21st century and for the, the digital shift. Um, so throughout the project, we've been working with, as Helen said, a whole team of, of uh, staff throughout 
throughout GLAM, and this has given us a real opportunity to make sure that uh, staff have these new skills in digital making, that they've been able to look at new ways in which they can engage in the collections within their own institutions, and in a way that they've been able to learn through being creative and also through having quite a lot of fun um, while they've been doing uh, the project as well. And as you can see um, from some of the comments up on the screen, um, we've had a really good response um, to working uh, with our staff in this way. Okay. So I think this project has, has really only kind of scratched the surface. I think there's an awful lot more that we would like to go on to do. And I think the challenge is... How do we now build on this? Um, so these are some of the things that we are, are looking at. So we are at the moment pulling, pulling together a report that shares our learning and our sort of recommendations about what has worked. Um, and we're also pulling together um, activities and resources to share online. Quite significantly, um, another big chunk of the budget for this project has enabled us to buy um, a kit of these um, different texts um, that will shortly be available to loan via IT learning um, through the IT learning centre um, so that you know potentially anyone can pick this stuff up and have a go and to support that we will be looking at running some taster sessions but I think the big thing that we're really really keen to be able to continue with is this loose network of people who are interested in digital making who can continue to come together not lots, but come together to, to sort of share, to, to inspire each other, to sort of keep that momentum going. Um, because I think we'd be quite disappointed if after the last sort of eight months or so, this all sort of fizzled out. Because I think we, we feel there's a lot of potential and a lot of fun, actually, to, to have with this. Probably the best way to get your head around some of the things we're talking about is to just visit the stand downstairs um, shortly where we've got some of those activities on offer. Um, and we, we have also um, sort of got sort of um, something set, an iPad set up so that if you are interested, we'd love to hear. And we'd love to hear actually about other things that I'm sure are probably happening in the university in this realm to start continue, or just to continue joining some of these dots together. Okay. Any questions?